couple of weeks ago, I received a question from a viewer who asked, is it possible to enter a question into a cell in Excel on the Mac? have that question sent through to an AI program like ChatGPT and then have the answer sent back to another cell in the same file. Would it be possible to do that with a single question? Would it be possible to do that with multiple questions? Well, there's several approaches to this one. There's a few add-ins that people have created. I've seen people use Office Script to do it, but the solution that I'm going to use is VBA based. It's not perfect by any means. I'll point out the issues during the demos, but for now, let me show you what I came up with. If you want to follow along, you can download a copy of the practice file from the link in the description below. Before I show you the VBA code and how it all hangs together, let me take you through some examples. Rather than having a fixed range, A1 to A10, my version has the flexibility of allowing the user to choose how many questions they want to ask. It doesn't matter what row the questions start on, as long as it's column A. For the first demo, let's ask some fairly simple mathematical type questions. To save time, I've already typed my questions, or prompts as they're known in the AI world, into the cells in column A. And you can see that I've used various different styles in my prompts. I've used a plus symbol. I've used the word times instead of multiply. I've used the letter X instead of the asterisk, again, for multiply. I've created a button. It's just a shape with a macro attached to it. And when I click the button, it runs the macro. The macro goes to the first non-empty cell in column A, in this case A5, and for each cell in column A, until it hits a blank cell, it submits the contents of that cell to ChatGPT, with the answer being returned in column B. Although I'm recording this, because I'm submitting these prompts to ChatGPT, there's no guarantee that what I get back will be correct. And if I run the macro a second or third time, I might get different answers. Anyway, let's give it a go and see what happens. So I'll click the button. And it looks like it has come back with a correct answer for each one. Two plus two is four. It recognizes times as multiply. It recognizes the X as multiply. It has put some strange characters, the backslashes, into the ones on row 11 and row 12, but I could get rid of those manually or I could use Power Query to clean those up. But the point is, it has worked. For the second demo, I have a list of UK-based soccer teams in A1 to A5 on the soccer team sheet. And I need to know the postcode of each team's stadium. Maybe I want to plot it on a map, for example. In the sheet called Demo 2, I've entered a formula into A5. The formula takes the text, what is the postcode for, followed by a space, adds the text from the cell containing the team name, and adds to that space football club stadium. The reason I added Football Club Stadium is because Liverpool is a place in its own right with several postcodes and on my first attempt it assumed Manchester City was referring to the city of Manchester. I then copied that formula down so what I've ended up with is five text strings which will be the prompts I submit to ChatGPT. As you can see this sheet has a button on it with the same macro attached. So let's click the button and see what it comes up with. It would have been nice to have it return just the postcode, but I can use a formula or power query to extract just the information I need. It's still quicker than asking ChatGPT directly and then copying and pasting into Excel. Let's go for the third demo. In this demo, there are no formulas, just questions about Excel. So let's submit those and see what that comes back with. Now, I was going to do three demos, but I added a fourth because of the apostrophe issue. 
When I was putting this together, I found that if the question included an apostrophe, ChatGPT could not generate an answer. It was as if it was using it as some kind of delimiter. So I tweaked the VBA code and now it works. So I'll click the button. You'll notice that all of those three questions have an apostrophe in and it's come back. At least it's come back with something. What it was coming back with originally before I tweet the VBA code was an error message. And that error message came from the VBA code. So you can see that for the third question, it can't provide real time data, but at least it's not come back with an error. So how do I do it? Well, before I show you the VBA code, I need to talk about API keys. An API key is a unique string. Mine is over 150 characters long of randomly generated characters. Any time you want to access OpenAI's models, and that includes ChatGPT from another application, and that's what I'm doing, accessing ChatGPT via Excel, you'll need to store your API key in the application that's accessing OpenAI. In my case, the API key is part of the VBA code. To get an API key, you need to go to the API keys page on openai.com. Go to openai.com, click products at the top of the screen, and then click API login. If you have an OpenAI or ChatGPT account, sign in. And if not, you can sign up for a free account. Once you're logged in, click the cog at the top of the screen and then click API keys on the left hand side. Click create a new secret key. You don't need to complete the name or project fields. Just click create secret key. A unique API key will be displayed and you need to copy it and store it securely. It's also important to note that while creating an account and generating an API key are free, there is a very small cost if you want to use the API. The pricing model is quite confusing, but in essence, using short prompts like the ones I used in these demos would cost just a fraction of a penny. By the way, my understanding is that you can still pay for API credits, even if you're on the free ChatGPT plan. Anyway, let's go and have a look at the VBA code. I'm not going to go through it line by line. I'm just going to give you the gist of it. The first line assigns my API key to a variable called API. Obviously, I don't want to expose my API key, so I've removed it for this demo. But you would put it between those two double quotes there. This part of the code goes to A1 and works its way down column A until it finds a non-blank cell. And this part is the meat of the macro. It loops through the cells in column A, the content of each cell being treated as a prompt, with the apostrophes being replaced by nothing. That gets submitted to ChatGPT, and the response from ChatGPT gets put into the cell in column B for that row. If ChatGPT can't return an answer, it displays error content not found in the cell. And that's what I was talking about before with the apostrophes. These three lines of code let you choose which version of ChatGPT to use. As it stands right now, it's using ChatGPT 4.0 or 4.0, depending on how you say it. As you can see, the two lines of code referencing 3.5 and 4 are commented out. As I said, it's not perfect. Sometimes it returns error content not found, even though if I copied and pasted the prompt into ChatGPT, it would return a valid answer. But it's a good starting point. And given time, I could probably improve it by code tweaks. Finally, before I wrap up, this VBA code is Mac specific. It won't work on Windows. There are references to Mac script in that code which is a scripting language on the Mac. You can do all of this in Excel for Windows, but you'd need slightly different VBA code. Well, I hope this video helped you out. If it did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the channel for more Excel tips and tricks. As always, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video, but until then, have an excellent day.